We're going to be going to our video, which is a video of a new type of robot called the Mule that's created by the U.S. Army. Now let's go ahead and roll that tape. Designed to do the donkey work on the modern battlefield, the Mule is no dumb workhorse. Well, essentially, it's rocket science on wheels. The secret to this go-anywhere mobility lies in the six-wheel design. Essentially, every wheel has an, an in-hub motor. It's independently driven. Anywhere they go, anything they go through, the Mule will be able to follow them. Mule stands for multifunction, utility, logistics, and equipment, and it's being developed to help soldiers in three key areas, transport, fire support, and mine detection. The countermine configuration will have the ability to detect, mark, and neutralize anti-tank and anti-personnel mines. The assault version will be fully armed with an integrated weapon system, as well as the reconnaissance and surveillance tools needed to locate and destroy the enemy. And the transport mule will take most of the weight off the soldiers' backs, carrying over 2,000 pounds, more than a ton of equipment and rucksacks. Unlike its four-legged counterpart, this beast of burden will always go exactly where you want. The mule can be driven by remote control using a simple hand device, but it can also be programmed to carry out fully autonomous missions using GPS and navigation sensors. The fact that this is an autonomous vehicle, that's the most critical thing about it. We tell it where to go, and it'll go there. Once programmed with the correct... Okay, so that was the uh, U.S. Army mule. So that's an impressive device. You load it up with tons of stuff. It follows you wherever you go. It can go where you go. We've built a miniature mule that that one over there on the floor that has four wheels can be, it won't do anywhere near what the big mule does, but it does have the capability to carry 300 pound payload and uh, outfitted with the proper GPS and electronics, it can do uh, quite a bit of things that uh, would be, may make it pretty impressive. Now it's interesting that existing technology such as GPS can be applied to so many things. Everybody can use that. What are some of the different difficult problems in robotics? What are some of the challenges that have to be surmounted to have really useful robots? Well, um, it's always uh, come, comes down to, to software, usually, um, the, the software development. And most rob robots have embedded systems, so they aren't um, going to be subjected to um, online hackers and so forth. But there, there's still a lot of software development that uh, is going on and, and needs to be continued. Now, are most of these robots remote controlled where there has to be a human operator telling it what to do? Now, this one can find its way using GPS. That's right. That mule can find its way just if you tell it where you want it to go, it figures out the best way to get there and will actually be able to navigate around obstacles without human intervention. But how far have we gotten with artificial intelligence where you can give sort of a general goal to a robot and it figures out you know, exactly how to do it without further control on your part? Well, we're just really getting started in that. And that mule, I think, is one of the first ones that has the capability to do that. But it's really impressive what they've done so far. Now, have you done any work on military stuff yourself? Oh, yeah. Over the years, I've worked on many military projects. A lot of them I can't talk about. Too bad. I'm sure it would be very interesting. Um, so what's really driving robotics? I get the feeling that the military is driving the development of robotics more than anybody else because they not only have the need for it, they also have the resources for it. Well, for the really sophisticated, high-end robots, that's true. But for the low-cost robots that sell for two or three hundred dollars like the Roomba um, that's predicated on uh, a big market I mean there, there there's a market for millions of those so they have spent a lot of money developing it and they did a, a really good job and they've got the price down to where almost anybody can afford it now people have been talking about robots probably since at least the 1940s or earlier uh, it hasn't quite gotten into our lives as much as some people thought it might. Is there anything that's hindering the development? Is there anything about robotic development that's turning out harder? 
than we thought it would at first. Um, that's that's really a good question. Uh, I I can't think of. Uh, and is there a, a bottleneck? And we, you know, we can have the mechanical arms with the articulated fingers and all that. That's uh, coming along quite nicely. There's several companies in Japan that have. Uh, actually walking robots that have two arms with fingers that can pick up things and I think we have an In SMO fact, we, we just happen to have a video of that which we're <laughs> going to show you now this is a video of the Asimo robot made by Honda let's go ahead and show that tape okay so there's no soundtrack so we can talk right over this now this has been under development for 12 years so they've put a lot of money and a lot of engineering into this, but you think in 12 years they would have gotten farther, although this one is really amazing. It can walk up and down stairs, it can run, it can hop on one foot, it has two arms that can move and pick up things with fingers that act like human. Now is there somebody behind a curtain directing it what to do, or is it figuring out what to do on its own? It's, I saw a personal uh, demo I was at one in San Francisco, and, and, and it's kind of like the Wizard of Oz behind the screen. <laughs> this, this guy with all these computers are running this robot, which needs to, to happen. It, it's not doing a lot on its own. But it's got great articulation. Look, it's going to unscrew the top of that bottle. I mean, the fingers look really realistic. Yeah, they're really well done. I mean, amazing amount of dexterity for, for a robot. But... but on the other hand, there's surgical robots that uh, a, a, a physician can operate from the other side of the world that have more precision than this, this robot has. So is this sort of a test just to demonstrate you know, certain capabilities rather than something that a person would really buy because it's useful? Yeah, they're not selling this robot, and I don't think it will ever be sold in this form. It's just too expensive, and it's more more of a PR uh, type of a thing for, for the car company. So you can see the size of the robot, unless that woman is really, really tall. Okay, so that's an example. It, uh, it knew to release the cup at the right time. It didn't just clutch it or crush the cup while it was right. holding it. right. Now, what about vision? Because could that robot see where it was going? I think it has cameras that go back to the operator, so mm -hmm. the operator can actually see from the point of view of where the hands are, what it's doing. 